What is up everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of November in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, we're also going to be talking about one stock here that I see a lot of upwards potential, a lot of momentum to the upside for this stock and it's currently breaking out and to be honest with you all I've nibbled some shares of this stock I'll talk about it more in a couple of minutes here as well as you guys and DGAS and kind of do a whole rundown technical analysis of what's been going on um, with natural gas and again you guys and DGAS and all I ask from you guys is if you enjoy this video simply go down below hit that like button and consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me about the stock market investing and trading and consider joining our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group 100% free of charge. Those are linked down below in the description box. So without further ado, guys, let's get into it and talk about the SPX, the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded companies here in the United States. So it's currently down about $1.26, a measly 0.04% in the red. So despite the fact that today really hasn't been a crazy eventful day, you know, we actually hit an all-time high on the S&P 500 at $3,124.17. So earlier this morning, you know, the futures were actually up. I believe it was 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard. Standard. The futures were up in terms of the S&P, Dow, NASDAQ about, you know, 0.1 to 0.3%. And this is mostly because Washington and Beijing had held constructive trade talks over the weekend. China state media said just days after White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow indicated that the world's top two economies were close to a deal. And we talked about that. I believe it was on Friday's video. So we got some good news, some optimism surrounding the trade war, which again is what kind of fueled these markets in the morning, but ultimately we ended up dumping, um, kind of gapping down from Friday's very bullish close here, but the good thing is ever since we gapped down, we kind of double bottom today, and uh, if you're looking at Friday's action as well, you can really consider that a triple bottom, and from there, we again ran up, hit that all-time high, and uh, despite the fact that we're down really nothing, we're kind of flat, we're still looking really bullish on the S&P. And if we go back to, let's say, that five-day, five-minute, you can see this is very, very bullish. Going to that one-hour chart again, you can see everything is looking bullish. We're simply at a higher high right now. So what I'm thinking is we could potentially sell off here, see a healthy pull-down, whether that's to about 3100 bucks, That would be um, really a, a healthy pullback, in my opinion, down to that 50 SMA, a much needed pullback here in the market, but are we going to get it? That is something we have to wait and see. But personally, again, these technicals, uh, RSI really overbought. You know, it could make sense that we do see this pull down, but who knows? We might not get it, guys. This thing could continue running 3130, 3140, ultimately get to 3200. Who knows here, right? But for, for um, you know, what we need to look at, just keep an eye on the futures, large caps heading into tomorrow morning. If they're around red. If they're coming down a bit, that could indicate a, a pull down maybe again to that 50 SMA level on this hourly chart. So hopping over here to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, up 18 points right now, up 0.07%. And just like the S&P guys, the Dow Jones hit an all-time high today at 28 Forty or $28,040.97, despite the fact that it didn't do much in terms of price appreciation today and price depreciation, right? Um, you know, really nothing much there. Uh, you can see we, we ran up Friday very bullish. Um, we kind of saw a bit of a sell-off here this morning, but ultimately we held the uptrend for the rest of the day. And if we just look at multiple time frames here, guys, you know, five-day, five-minute, it's looking very bullish, just like the S&P. Um, you know, on the hourly chart, the 20-day, one-hour chart, you can argue our size overbought, uh, overbought. You can argue that this thing can definitely see a pull down um, to that 50 SMA, putting us at that 27,800. 
hundred dollar level and is today the first day that we hit 28k i don't think it is actually it might be the first day ever that the dow jones hit 28,000 bucks which is a historical moment and it does seem like it is unless we hit it there friday after market um it does seem like we did hit it there friday after market but either way you know historical moment over these past couple of days for the dow jones getting into that 28k but again one can argue um based on on the four hour chart, the 20 day chart, that this could potentially see a pull down again down to that $27,800 level. So the NASDAQ right now, guys, up 10 points, up 0.1%. And judging on this hourly chart, it seems like we already saw that pull down um, this morning, retest on the 50 SMA, and uh, we can see it running up from there. So arguably, this is the most. Um, over, I guess you can say the least overbought, the most oversold out of the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ, because judging the RSI, it's more in the middle, when again, um, the Dow is really overbought, as well as the S&P, if I remember correctly, on the 20-day, in terms of the RSI, yes, it is, so you can argue NASDAQ, uh, you know, has a lot more room to run based on the RSI, and uh, based on the fact that it already pulled down this morning and retested the higher low on the 50 SMA, so that's kind of what I'm seeing here potentially a, an all-time high tomorrow on the Nasdaq since it didn't hit it today actually did it hit it today um, based on this future let me take a look uh, I guess you can say yeah 2 a.m. Eastern Standard the future hit the all-time high here um, but again that was not really in today's price action in terms of the trading day so I'd keep an eye tomorrow to see if we do something like this get more overbought and ultimately hit that uh, all-time high um, again on the Nasdaq so that's what I'm looking at here uh you know in terms of the major markets let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts i'd love to know what you guys have to think about these markets any stocks any etfs that you're watching let me know down below in the comment section so what did i do in terms of my trading today guys if you watched yesterday's video um sunday's video you know that i was watching disney right and disney is one of those stocks that we discussed that has a lot of momentum to the upside um um, in its favor at this point. And this is because of multiple things. They reported earnings a couple of days ago. Um, they did quite well on their earnings uh, in terms of EPS. They did very well in EPS. They missed on revenue by a slight margin, but really the traders out there, investors, Wall Street didn't really care about that. The stock went up regardless. Another good thing that happened is the day after Disney Plus came out, we got uh, a word that 10 million subscriptions um, 10 million signups, really just 10 million, um, you know, people signed up for the platform, which is very, very good and ultimately ran up that stock even more um, since, you know, the earnings was the first catalyst. So two catalysts here running up the stock uh, in terms of Disney and we saw a pull down, right? We saw a pull down. I think it was on Friday, uh, really over the past couple of days, we've been seeing a cool off in Disney. And what did that do, guys? That opened up about a 4 or 5% margin of profit from 150 where we double topped here and sold off to about 140, uh, 144. So I saw that heading into um, the session today. And again, I talked about that in yesterday's video. So on the hourly chart, what I was looking at in specific was, is this thing going to hold 144, which is technically a dip like we discussed. The RSI was brought down after that dip. So that's attractive in terms of that level. And we were holding the 50 SMA, which we bounced on uh, pre, uh, pr a couple previous times over the past couple of days. So the fact that we started to run up this morning on top of that 144 level, which is a, a previous resistance and, you know, now a, a new support, right? That was a good sign this morning. We got that massive run up, that break above the 180 SMA on this five day, five minute chart. And that's honestly, honestly, where I took a position um, in Disney and ultimately sold it um, at the resistance level at about 146.50. And that's a level that I was eyeing up to sell it because a couple of days ago, that uh, is 
where we held a support and again we broke that support and making it a resistance so at that point I figured that would be a good little uh, place to just exit out take the profits because the profits were pretty good at this point so I got in I believe it was 145.20 um, and again I sold out at about 146 I believe it was like 60 if I remember correctly and uh, that is a gain of about 1% so in terms of my day trades that's what I did I know a lot of you already know that I'm involved with a lot of swing trades and Shopify which is that breakout stock that you see in the thumbnail and that I want to talk about is one uh, a new stock that I've added money into here as a swing trade so we might as well break this down and talk about what's been going on with Shopify and why I think this move here is very very bullish so Shopify um, they reported earnings Wall Street didn't really like their earnings a couple of weeks ago you guys can see in here they actually reported a loss of 29 cents per share when they were supposed to report a profit of 11 cents per share the stock ended up selling off all the way to about 284 after that but the attractive thing is here on a technical basis we actually held that 284 level which proves to be a support um, from back in the beginning towards actually more towards the middle towards the end of September and back here towards the end of June in 2019 so we held those levels two times in the past and the fact that we ran up from that level again that's a good sign you know in terms of technicals then we started to test that 180 that 50 SMA and ultimately today is the day that we broke above it with a gain of up to uh, four percent I believe it was at its high um, of the day today in terms of Shopify it was up four percent and that was back here a couple of minutes ago actually before I started filming this video so I think I took the position at about 300, uh, I think it was more towards the 317 level. Um, it would have been nice getting in at 311. Obviously, I didn't know it was going to rally at that point, so we let it pop here. At this point, momentum was obviously to the upside. We pulled down here, held a higher low, and again, 317 is where I got in, I believe, right here. So overall, guys, this is a stock that's kind of like PayPal, right? PayPal, in terms of technicals, it's very similar. So we're actually slowly breaking out of of the moving averages on this four hour chart on PayPal and that's kind of why I've been taking positions in PayPal you know over these past couple of days not today though but previously I did Shopify again it's looking very similar we're breaking out of those moving averages right you know it seems like Wall Street traders investors they're starting to forget about that EPS miss there which I kind of expected would happen right growth beasts like Shopify stocks in general that are very very hyped up they run like crazy Crazy. You know, sometimes they report poor earnings, then the next two, three weeks go by, and then all of a sudden the stock's rallying yet again despite that poor earnings performance. So that's kind of what I'm seeing here. And some other levels that are critical that we're breaking are 200, or not, not, not 200, guys. This is the next level, 325. I'd like to see a break above. If we do that um, and then ultimately break 345, that's going to be extremely bullish to the point where I could see see it getting back to $400. And another thing worth mentioning here is overall Shopify was looking like it could potentially form a head and shoulders pattern here on the four hour chart, which obviously would be uh, not in our favor as swing traders of the stock, right? And that's another good thing about it, that it's kind of not uh, forming that it's breaking to the upside right because if we were to get rejected here and sell off to the low 290s you know high 280s and even below 280 what's going to be happening at that point happening at that point that's going to be the completion of the right shoulder of this head and shoulders pattern which you can kind of see it here you know left shoulder head right shoulder would be if it were to break down and luckily we're breaking out so we're kind of um, you know not forming that uh, but we're running to the upside here which is good so ideally tomorrow for me to add more money into Shopify uh, 325 needs to break and from there again we could potentially run up to 340 and anything in this level in this range as long as we hold it I'm looking to add more shares into Shopify so that is the one stock that I'm looking at right now that is breaking out another one that I'm really liking actually let's get into you guys and uh, D gas first very quickly before I do talk about this other one but natural gas today guys like we talked about in yesterday's video, um, it took quite a dump. 13 cents down today, down 5%. And you can imagine... 
you guys is, is in the gutter today, right? If we go to that 20-day chart, we can see that that head and shoulders pattern I talked about in yesterday's video, it's it's really forming right now, right? You know, I, I drew this arrow in yesterday's video kind of showing you all on a more visual basis uh, what could potentially happen here, and that's exactly what's happening. I talked about how if we were to break 265, this thing would likely dump even further. That's exactly what it's doing now. So what levels am I watching for it to go to? guys potentially um 258 that's one that i'm looking that's coming uh looking at that's coming up um it seems like 260 261's another one that it's currently um trading above so those are just two levels that that are worth watching here for natural gas and you can uh, see the clear cut head and shoulder here guys right left shoulder head here um you know up to about three bucks now the right shoulder's forming especially if we're dumping below 260 250 um it's going to be really Really the completion of the head and shoulder pattern at that point. So the bulls would love to see a break out of these moving averages. Um, that's what we want to see. If you're a bull and you want to trade you gas that goes up whenever natural gas is going up, that is what you want to see. And who knows, guys, as withdrawals come here in the next couple of weeks, as we start to get those uh, bullish storage reports that come out every Thursday at 10:30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, you know. You guys, natural gas could be seeing a rally at that point in time. But like I mentioned yesterday, um, in the short term here, I still see more potential in degas, which went up 13.69% today. And again, this goes up whenever natural gas is selling off. So I see more potential in this because the previous report um, did show a, 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 an injection of 3 billion cubic feet of natural gas, which is um, a, a bearish report for natural gas. So that's kind of why we're seeing this in the short term. And maybe once we get, again, like I said, a bullish report, maybe in two, three weeks, that's when we see the uh, the natural gas pump up. And that's when we see the move in you gas to the upside that a lot of us in the group, um, a lot of people in general are really anticipating and waiting for here. So at this point, um, I'd be careful, right? I'd really be looking forward to this Thursday's report and see what that's going to look like. But in the short term, D gas is probably probably going to be the better play here. And uh, let's get into that other breakout stock, which is CMG Chipotle Mexican Grill. And if you guys remember, this is another one of those stocks that I'm swing trading. I started buying in um, in the 750s, I believe. And now we're getting that technical break that I was looking for before adding more money. I didn't add more money yet, but probably tomorrow or the next day, I'm going to add more money into Chipotle Mexican Grill. And that, uh, that technical break that we got was was that break above that 50 SMA here on this, uh, you know, four hour chart? Uh, the first sign that I saw, and which is why I got into Chipotle, quite frankly, is we held uh, 730, which was a level um, of, of old all time highs, and that being an old resistance, the fact that we were holding above it as a new support, that was a good sign for me um, to at least initiate a position. And now, like I said in a couple of weeks ago's video, um, when we were trading under this 50 SMA, now that we broke above it, I'm looking to add more money, but probably tomorrow or the next day for that. So Chipotle Mexican Grill up to 860, guys. This thing offers about 10% profit potential, and that is looking very attractive in my personal opinion right now as a swing trader. So Netflix is another one worth watching here, guys, despite the fact that it, did, it didn't do too well, I believe, the day Disney Plus came out. Despite that fact, it's still kind of breaking out here in, in, in a sense, right? Moving averages have been resistances. Um, you know, we've gotten the bearish cross here, the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA, but now we're getting a bullish cross, the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA. We're making higher lows, higher highs, breaking out, right? So here, I expect this thing to see a major resistance at about 315, 320. But the interesting thing is, once we get to that level and we break out, that is where we can see a big move, a big leg up to 340 where we could potentially capture a trade. That's one thing that could happen. But me personally, I think this would happen being um, a pull down, 50 SMA retest, RSI um, at a more healthy spot, and then this could be an entry maybe at about 290, 295 on top of that 50 SMA on the dip, and then maybe you can ride it up to 315. That's kind of what I'm thinking as being a better um, opportunity than the first one uh, mentioned. So, you know, Netflix, I'm watching that one. Disney, 
is another one here, guys, that uh, obviously I day traded it today. You know, it's worth watching for a potential test to 150 tomorrow. So watch that 147 to 150 move. That's definitely possible. PayPal, we already touched it a little bit uh, upon it a little bit. It's very similar to Shopify where it's been battered down over the past couple of months. Now it's finally reversing above those moving averages. This is worth looking at, especially if we get that next leg up and really get back into those 106, 107, 108 levels, you know, because once we get there, guys, and we start to push up to 110, these are the levels where, you know, this thing can definitely catch on fire because speaking just technically here, you know, 110 is a big level of resistance. We could gap up to 114 there, you know, 116. There's just a lot of potential to the upside if PayPal um, gets there, right? So three stocks that are worth watching that are reporting earnings here in the next couple couple of days are Target, um, TGT, guys. This is reporting earnings, I believe, on the 20th, 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. Um, Target's been crushing it, guys. Last earnings report, they ran um, a lot. I know you remember that. It was about a 20% day for Target. I think it was the biggest day in history for that stock, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly. So it's worth watching here. Um, is it going to get uh, you know a pull down? Are we going to get a good opportunity before the earnings report? I don't know. Uh, me, personally, I'm waiting till after, and then maybe we get a dip by. Um, I might consider it, right? Another one is HD Home Depot. They're also reporting earnings here. Um, you know, on the 19th, they've been doing quite well. They actually hit an all-time high, I believe, today at 239.31. So if we get it pulled down, guys, this could be a good... Uh, potential play and who knows if they crush earnings we may not get the pull down this thing might be flying to, to another all time high right so the last one is going to be Lowe's ticker symbol L-O-W they report earnings on the 20th so excuse me, in two days, Lowe's reports earnings, and again, just like HD, just like, um, what's the other one, Target, if they do well in earnings, this could even hit an all-time high above 118, or we get the pull down, um, we enter on the dip, who knows, guys, but it's worth watching those, as a lot of the major companies out there, um, they already reported earnings, and quite honest, Lowe's, HD, Target, although when, when people think major companies in the world, they don't think these companies, but they are are still massive companies out there that are worth watching in terms of earnings again because they can fluctuate and they can offer a short-term play uh, to, to profit on the stock or you can even enter in a long position if they dip down uh, long enough or uh, dip dip enough for you to get in so that's kind of it for this video um, if you enjoyed it feel free to go down below hit that like button consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me and don't forget to join the strive smart discord group chat as well as the strive smart facebook group those are linked down below as well as the strive smart merch if you do want to support me the brand and the channel so i'll catch you all in the next video thanks again for watching peace out